Welcome to the Particle Illusion 3 Quick Start video. On the right of the interface is the library window, where all the particle emitters are stored. Above the library is the preview window, where by clicking and dragging the mouse, you can test out the motion and look of an emitter. You'll notice a variety of effects in the default library, from sparkles to smoke to water. To add an effect to a scene, select an emitter in the library and click in the center of stage window. By moving up to the play controls and hitting play, you can get a look at what the emitter looks like on the stage. You'll notice that some information has appeared on the left side of the screen in the hierarchy window. The hierarchy window shows you what emitters are in the scene and allows you to access controls to customize the effect. Adjusting the zoom graph allows you to increase or decrease the emitter's overall size. The spin graph changes the rotation of an emitter's particles. The number graph controls the amount of particles emitted. The life graph controls how long a particle stays on the screen. Visibility allows you to fade your emitter in and out. Let's take a look at some of the other properties that can be changed by right-clicking on the emitter and choosing Properties. Properties has a hierarchy window on its left side similar to the one in the main interface and a large preview window on the right side. At the bottom of the hierarchy window, you'll notice a small star icon beside the word tendrils and another star beside spinning. The star icon indicates a particle type. Several particle types consisting of different effects can be added together to make up a particle emitter. A particle shape is an image that makes up an individual particle. At the top of the page, you can see the image that's currently being emitted by the particle type. You can change it by selecting a new shape from the list and clicking Make Active. Using a different shape changes the look of a particle type. You can add your own shapes to the library by clicking the Add New Shape to Library button and choosing an image file. We'll go with the diamond star shape and make it active. If you click the full emitter checkbox under the preview window, you can see what the new shape looks like in the overall particle emitter. You can also change the color of a particle type by clicking on the colors tab. The white strip defines the color of the particles. You can change the color by clicking on a point and choosing a color from the picker. Clicking at another area of the strip adds another color point. We'll choose red for that one. Now, each particle will start out yellow, become orange, and then red. Let's also change the tendril particle type's color by clicking on the color point and choosing blue from the picker. Previewing the full emitter lets us take a look at the changes together. Hitting OK saves the changes you've made to the emitter since you entered the properties window. You can animate an emitter's position in the stage window. Click on the select arrow or hit the A key. Moving the emitter at frame 1 sets the emitter's initial position. We can roll forward through time in the graph window to frame 20 and move the emitter to a new position. You'll notice a little box has appeared in the graph window above 20. That indicates that a position keyframe has been set at frame 20. Changing the position will adjust the motion of the emitter. Let's move ahead in time and move the emitter again. A new keyframe is set and you can see small dots between each keyframe on the stage to indicate the motion of the emitter. Right now, the emitter is moving directly from point to point in a straight line. You can change that by alt-clicking on a keyframe to convert it to a curve. Now the emitter follows a much smoother path as it travels. Another way to animate an emitter's position is to draw the motion in the stage. You can do this by right-clicking on the emitter and choosing Record Position. Left-clicking once will start recording the movement of the mouse's position on the stage, and left-clicking a second time will stop the recording. Once you've stopped recording, you can smooth the motion of the recorded path with a point smoothing slider. Hitting play shows you the newly created animation. The final window is the layers window. From here, we can add a video clip or sequence of images to the stage. Right-click and choose background image from the menu. A browser appears for you to find your background. A pop-up appears with some options for how to deal with the video. We'll stick with the defaults and hit OK. 
Hit play to watch the combination of the clip and the emitter. Let's have a look at some of the other functions of the layers window. The T button controls the layers background transparency. If your clip contains an alpha channel, you can turn it on and off by clicking the T. The target icon turns the display of objects on the stage on and off. Clicking it once hides the emitter and its key points. The third icon hides and unhides any particles on that layer. The BG icon turns the display of the background image on and off. To export the scene on the stage as a video clip, click on the red Save Output button. Type in a file name and hit Save to access the output options. This page allows you to set a range of frames to output and the size of the final video. Click OK to move on. Finally, pick a video codec that you wish to output with and click OK. Particle Illusion plays back the animation as it saves it to file.